There are many different ways to carry things on your bike, whether for commuting and transport or for traveling and exploring. In this video, I'll be going over some of the different ways to carry stuff on your bike, the pros and cons of each, and what to look out for when buying a bag to use for cycling. I've broken things down into two parts, one for cycling for transport and one for touring and traveling or overnight trips. This video is part one, all about carrying your stuff when using a bike for transport and commuting around town. If you'd like to see part two, the link appearing above will take you to it. As well, there's also a link in the description below. I've always been a bag girl and that didn't change when I started cycling. However, the kinds of bags in my closet have and I've learned lots about what works and what doesn't. When commuting or riding around town, you usually have less stuff than when traveling or touring by bike, but not always. So there is a little crossover and rarely will one bag cover all situations. For those new to cycling, I recommend getting a bike specific bag. Why? You'll have a more comfortable ride due to the features cycling bags have built into them. However, if you're on a budget and you have a backpack or messenger bag you want to use, there are a few things to look out for. Make sure the bag is secured to your body as tightly as possible so it won't unexpectedly shift around when you're riding. Having a bag shift unexpectedly is annoying because it's distracting, but at the wrong moment can be really dangerous. So look for waist and chest straps to stabilize the bag. And for those of us on the smaller side, make sure your bag isn't blocking your view over your shoulder. Being able to do shoulder checks and actually see what's coming is important. For example, I have this low alpine bag, which is much better for me than this Shimano bag due to the width of the top part of this bag, which blocks my view. If your bike does have a rack, I would recommend getting some bungees or straps like on my Brody and strapping your bag to the rack. They don't cost much and your sit bones and shoulders will thank you for having less weight in your saddle and you'll also avoid getting a sweaty back. Next up, panniers or panniers, depending on how you like to pronounce it. They are bike specific bags made with hooks, which are used for attaching onto the bike rack. They have been around for ages and they work really well, especially when shopping, because with two, you can fit a fair amount of groceries in them. There are a lot of different sizes and styles out there to choose from. Some convert into backpacks or shoulder bags, which makes them easier to carry off the bike. So you should have no trouble finding something that you like the style of and that functions well for you. The next option is saddle bags. They are great for those who don't want to attach a rack to their bike, as they attach to the back of your, you guessed it, saddle. There are a few out there to choose from, and the one I use is the Frost & Seckers Quick Release Mount with their matching bags. This mount keeps fuss to a minimum, and I have a rack on my commuting touring bike and on the electric Brompton. It's particularly handy on the Brompton as the front mount is taken up by the battery. If you already have a saddle bag, such as a Caradice bag, the mount is compatible with other saddle bags that have two tabs for securing the bag to the saddle. The reason this system is my go-to for running around town is it fits my laptop and other items for commuting and when off the bike it looks like a normal bag and is easy to carry with a shoulder strap. I'll link to the review above and in the description if you want to know more. All right, so that brings me to the last option. This one is for those of you who might want to use your road bike to commute, but you don't have any brazons to attach a rack to your bike. It's the tail fin rack. They have a few options now, including a carbon rack and an alloy version. You can go for the aero pack on its own if you want to be fast and light, or there's a version for attaching panniers to it as well if you want the option to carry more. No matter the type of bag you choose, there are a few things you should look out for in a bag you want to use on your bike. First, you want something sturdy that's going to last because the roads you ride aren't always as smooth as you'd like. They will get jostled around and so for this, I recommend metal hooks and sturdy straps that will last. Waterproofing is really important because arriving at work with your change of clothes wet or a laptop ruined is not a good start to the day. Some bags are waterproof on their own Check for things like tape seams and zippers to make sure there's nowhere for the water to seep in. There are also bags that are water resistant that come with covers to put on when it rains really heavily. I prefer the bags that are fully waterproof because it's less faff and if the weather gets worse partway through a ride, there's no need to worry about the stuff inside your bag getting wet. Other things that can be handy to have are reflective details on the bag and places to hook lights to for night riding. 
as well, look for straps that make it easier to carry off the bike. And I always like an easy to access pocket on the outside for your keys and wallet. So that's the lowdown on how to transport things day to day. Next up, longer distance traveling and multi trips when you have more stuff. Thanks for watching, until the next video.